Hi, my name is Linda Farnan. I'm a partner at the firm of Mary Farnan and Ryan in the Detroit metropolitan area. I've been a practicing attorney for 31 years, and for the last 26 years, I've been defending dentists and dental specialists in malpractice and licensing complaints. I've also assisted many dentists and dental practices in risk management issues. Today, I'd like to talk about licensing complaints. Some of you may have experienced them, and some may not, but there are important things that you need to know if you have a licensing complaint and investigation. Complaints to the Department of Community Health matter a lot. Your license is basically your ticket allowing you to practice dentistry. So you need to take them very seriously because depending on what happens with the complaints, which we'll talk about, it could seriously affect your ability to practice dentistry. Complaints to the DCH can be started by basically three different entities. Typically, we see them from patients. However, we have seen them from other dentists and from insurance carriers. The primary reason we see patients filing a complaint with the DCH is because they're unhappy with some aspect of care and or want refunds made or reimbursement for care rendered by other practitioners. Very often these patients have already attempted to hire a lawyer and have been unsuccessful, so their next step is to go to the DCH. Complaints by dentists against other dentists to the Department of Community Health are somewhat rare, but they do happen. Typically, uh, those complaints come into place when a dentist sees dental work or treatment or other issues that occurred in another office and typically these are dentists who are subsequent treating dentists and they feel the need or the obligation to advise the department of issues regarding treatment by other dentists. Third parties who file a complaint with the DCH are primarily insurance carriers. These primarily relate to issues regarding insurance billings, whether they be um, fraudulent billings or some other issue with billings. Again, these are less frequent than patient complaints, but they do occur. If a complaint is filed by law, the Department of Community Health must investigate. Um, I once had a situation in which a dentist who never even saw the patient had to sit down and meet with an investigator because the patient claimed he had been seen. So it is mandatory that an investigation be started. At what happens after that depends on a lot of factors. The first thing that dentists should do to comply with a complaint is to call your malpractice carrier and get a lawyer. Um, it is very important that right from the outset, the dentist have legal representation. Initially, the complaints at DCH are investigated by investigators who are on staff. Um, the first step is to gather records and then those are reviewed. Um, these are people that are employed by the state of Michigan. Typically, if an investigation doesn't close quickly, you can expect to be asked for an interview and perhaps go on to other steps in the process, which uh, we'll be talking about in a couple minutes. As I stated a couple seconds ago, hiring an attorney is extremely important. The benefits are an attorney can assist you in your defense from the very beginning. I have had a lot of experience where people have tried to handle initial stages of the complaint by themselves and have gotten themselves in trouble because they have not had the assistance of an attorney. So that is extremely important. Dentists certainly are the most knowledgeable about the care and treatment they've rendered, but you are now in a legal process. and you need the assistance of a lawyer, just as if the patient had filed a malpractice suit. 
because there are legal implications that you may not appreciate and understand over and above your knowledge of your care. Yes, um, cases are settled at every step of the way in the investigative process. Uh, whether they are settled or not will depend on what the proposed settlements are and what the dentist is, is willing to agree to and what the department and the board of dentistry are willing to agree to. If a licensing complaint proceeds to a formal complaint in an administrative law court, the case will be decided by an administrative law judge. There are no juries. There are rights to appeal to the circuit courts in the state under certain circumstances. If a violation of the public health code is found, there are a number of different disciplines that can be imposed. Typically, the most common we see are fines, possibly continuing education courses, but they can go all the way from suspensions to practicing under supervision, um, even revocation. The, there is a very specific law that sets forth if you do certain things in violation of the public health code, then these are the disciplinary options, and it's very, very specific and also very long. Long-term effects of a license violation depends on the severity of the violation. Um, the violations get reported to both the National Practitioner Data Bank and also obviously the state knows about it, and it can affect the ability of the dentist to get relicensed. It can affect whether or not they have a full license, and it also can affect your malpractice premiums. number one mistake at the risk of sounding like I'm beating a dead horse is not getting a lawyer at the outset and protecting yourself in the legal proceeding. MDA insurance can help. Um, the MDA insurance policy, which I work with, provides coverage for attorney fees and licensing matters. That is often the most expensive part of defending a licensing matter. Other malpractice policies may provide this as well, but the MDA policy does provide it and is of great assistance in that regard. Get a lawyer early.